So this is a, a reminder that we are looking for future webinar presenters. And so if you would like to be featured in this series, we would love to have you. And please reach out and contact us at this email address that you can see on your screen. And we have all of the webinars, uh, plus a case study database and a discussion forum um, and other activities as part of our community of practice. And everybody is welcome to join this community of practice. And you can see the link um, here on the screen. And I think um, one of my colleagues might put it into the chat box to make it easier for you to, to continue. So with that, I can we can move on to the webinar. Uh, again, it's called Mapping the Wild, Assessing African Swine Fever Risk in Balkans Hunting Grounds. And our presenter today is Mario Orico. Um, and Mar Mario is a versatile professional with a background in veterinary consultancy, research and farm management, specializing in disease control and epidemiology. His experience includes analyzing data on diseases such as African swine fever, and then creating predictive models for their effective management. He's also worked as a farm veterinarian and assistant with focus on infectious disease prophylactics and management of reproduction. Mario is a veterinarian with further degrees in animal health and livestock production and a master's in One Health. And he's dedicated to advancing animal welfare through practical expertise and academic knowledge. So welcome, Mario. We're very happy to have you today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and invite you to share yours. And uh, and please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can you see? Yes. Yes, we do. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for inviting me. And uh, uh, I want also to thank all the people uh, attending this uh, uh, presentation so spending uh, this half an hour together and um, so as um, Melissa saw today uh, say that today we are gonna talk about African swine fever and specifically we are gonna talk uh, about uh, risk assessment in uh, hunting ground environment so um, but before uh, going through uh, explaining you uh, in detail what we did uh, with this tool that we developed. Uh, I would like to give you a brief overview of African swine fever because I don't know if all of you are uh, into this disease. So basically uh, African swine fever is a um, disease caused by a DNA virus that can affect both wildlife and uh, domestic, uh, wild and domestic uh, pig population. Um, it is uh, highly contagious and uh, with high high mortality rate and uh, one of uh, its characteristics is that is uh, pretty resistant and uh, strongly resistant in the environment so um, it's essential for you to know uh, that its epidemiological cycle is quite complex because uh, there are many uh, factors uh, involved in the introduction or spread of the disease in different environments so um, we can uh, have a domestic uh, pig cycle that uh, it's uh, related mainly to the animals and the humans because of trading of infected meat or um, the different way of farming. And then we have also a um, wild uh, habitat cycle that is uh, linked to the environment, so with the wild boar. And um, this is uh, crucial to understand because uh, uh, the carcasses of wild animals can stay for long in the environment. So even if a place uh, is even if in a place the disease is eradicated, it can be uh, this can be still a continuous source of infection for African swine fever. And um, here uh, I put a video where you can clearly see. Um, from the introduction uh, in uh, Georgia in 2014, all the different uh, cycles that appeared uh, in the world, and especially in the northeast of uh, Europe, we had a wild boar cycle. So you see all the, the green dots that are related to the wild animals. 
And then uh, later on, 2018, 19, uh, we have all the uh, the cluster in China, in the southeast of uh, the world. There are mainly domestic cycle. Um, they uh, they belong to the domestic cycle, um, epidemiological cycle. At the moment, uh, uh, African swine fever is endemic and uh, is um, is present in the in different uh, area of the world. And uh, the last um, uh, update in Europe, uh, we had uh, a case in a wildlife in a wild boar in the west of Germany that is quite uh, important. Uh, we have a continuous uh, uh, new outbreak uh, in um, Italy, uh, especially in the north of Italy, uh, going to damage all the meat pork meat industry of Emilia Romagna. So with an increase also on uh, restriction area uh, with different management uh, activities. Then we have a continuous uh, um, um, cluster in the north uh, east of Germany with the Poland uh, at the Poland border. And then we have um, a continuous uh, clustering in the Balkans, uh, especially in domestic pigs. And uh, most recently, Albania has joined the um, the group of the European countries with uh, the disease because we had uh, an outbreak in wildlife uh, in uh, February 2024. Um, since this disease um, involves a lot of um, different environments, so human uh, side, animal side and environmental side, uh, it's requested to approach it with uh, an integrated approach. So. Uh, it's really important. Uh, um, as you can see, top left, there is a picture that I took from a paper that was published in 2019, where they uh, calculated the densities, uh, uh, the population density of wildlife. So it's really important that all the people involved in the forestry activities, so hunters, uh, forestry management, uh, and uh, wildlife conservatory people um, are uh, included in the management of the disease because they manage actually the habitat of the wild boar that is the main reservoir today of the disease. And also ecosystem consideration should be taken in account because uh, um, looking for a wild boar or a carcass of a wild boar in summer is different than looking, for example, in uh, winter. Then the people who stay in the forest, so not only the hunters, but also the mushroom pickers, the berry pickers, or um, even people just going in the forest for leisure should be educated by the policy manager because uh, um, they can increase uh, notably the, um, the rate of uh, reporting of su suspected cases. And um, so they, need to be included in uh, the surveillance strategies that a country decide uh, to apply. And lastly, uh, recently many apps have been developed to help um, wildlife disease uh, um, workers to report uh, wildlife. So one app that have been used also in the Balkans is iMamalia. There is a free app that everyone can download and uh, if you go for a walk or you go for activities in the forest, you can uh, signal a carcass and then help the authorities to define uh, the infectious area, for example. But uh, in um, in our specific work, we decided to focus on hunters because the hunters, uh, even uh, if uh, they are not uh, considered uh, super uh, well by the society, but uh, with their hobby, they are part of the epidemiological cycle of the of African swine fever, so they can help us preventing, detecting, and controlling the disease. Actually, I I choose to put these two pictures because uh, uh, the one on the bottom right you can see a correct way of uh, bringing the the game uh, to I don't know the truck or the dressing facility, so it should be done with a vessel to avoid that uh, uh, all organic uh, fluid can uh, uh, split out of the vessel. And uh, in the center, you can see a picture I took under my house in Calabria, south of Italy, where they used to uh, take uh, home the wild boar on the top of the car. So 
uh, as you can see, uh, different uh, uh, activities played by the hunters can uh, notably in, uh, influence the risk of having African swine fever. So if they are educated, they can prevent it uh, with the best security and management activities. Then they are also super important because um, uh, they can go in the forest and they and they have been already used in many countries for active search of carcasses around the infectious area. And in a naive area, they're also important because if there is an abnormal mortality of wild boar, maybe this can be uh, due to African swine fever. And so they are kind of um, a sentinel of the environment. And last, there is... Uh, the most uh, debated uh, activity is controlling. So um, with selective hunting, you can effectively control the population of wild boar in different conditions. So um, even if is this is often considered as the extrema ratio, but uh, also with the selective hunting, uh, the hunters play a crucial role in controlling the disease. But uh, let's focus now on the aim of our work. So basically, we wanted to estimate the risk uh, of uh, African swine fever introduction and spread and the detection capacity of African swine fever among the hunting ground. So our epidemiological unit uh, since now is uh, the hunting ground. So we consider the hunting ground like a unit where um, all the activity performance can influence the risk. So on a risk-based approach, um, we did this, um, we did a survey, we performed a survey in uh, Kosovo, Montenegro and Serbia, and um, it was a face-to-face -face survey uh, where we filled in a form we created on an um, open source tool that is called EpiCollect. And uh, this uh, um, survey uh, contains 62 questions. This question belong all uh, to different risks. So we had the 24 question for the risk of introduction, 12 for the detection capability and so on. Uh, just to give you uh, also a little background on the place where we did uh, this survey, um, we did in, um, in the Balkans, so Kosovo, Montenegro and Serbia, they are quite similar in terms of uh, suitable area for wild boar. So, in all of them, more than 75% of the whole country is uh, a, a good landscape for wild boar uh, with different uh, uh, numbers of hunting ground, but more or less the management of the hunting ground worked in the same way, because this is also important. In the Balkans, uh, uh, hunting wild boar is also a big business and uh, uh, the way they organize it is more or less the same, so we can make a comparative analysis later on. Um, so as I was saying, the survey is uh, made by 62 questions and uh, basically uh, it goes through different topics that can be uh, the characteristic of the hunting ground. So for example, the presence of river, city, uh, mountain, flatland. If the hunting ground is already infected or not with African swine fever, if uh, passive or active surveillance has been performed in this area, then uh, the what we call the pig wild boar interface. So uh, if in the area there are a lot of uh, free ranging uh, uh, pigs or other farms, um, then we also look for the uh, other topic where the control of wild boar uh, hunting procedures. So how they perform the, the dressing of the carcasses if disinfection measures were put on or and also the control of the procedures for the safe removal or offal or the demos because often uh, the um, the residual the offal of the um, after the dressing are not taken care enough and um, with this we wanted to produce uh, maps so always uh, with uh, our uh, epidemiological unit that is the hunting ground only in kosovo we didn't uh, plot on uh, the hunting ground maps because uh, kosovo has no shape file for the hunting ground so we decided to uh, merge uh, the value from each um, hunting ground at a municipality level and uh, our goal was to create um, a tool that can be used by the policymaker 
to identify the weakest hunting ground, so the hunting ground more at risk, so where maybe they don't do enough uh, procedures. Uh, also identify the easiest and the cheapest procedure or mitigation measure that you can use to reduce the risk in that area. Uh, we would like to create something that can be used to compare also uh, the scores between countries or between regions. And then uh, if this uh, assessment could have been done regularly, like every three months, every six months, you can also assess the change of the risk over the time. So how do we do? Uh, how, how did we do? So basically, the first thing we did, we did um, risk factor identification through a literature review. So we just find all the risk factor for African swine fever related to wild boar. Then we selected the, uh, the question that were linked to this risk factor from a, um, a questionnaire that uh, was already developed by the Serbian authorities. And, um, and then we perform an expert knowledge elicitation to give to each of risk, each of these risk factor that we uh, identified uh, through the literature review, an important score. So, and this important score has been used then later on to multiply for the different value we get from the survey. And then for the expert elicitation, we decided to do a snowball sampling. So we just uh, defined some seeders and then these seeders um, uh, give a nomination of other colleagues that they thought they were uh, skilled in this field. And, um, but then to assess uh, whether it were the limit was the limit for the um, experts uh, uh, because of redundancy in the country. So this was uh, a European uh, oriented uh, expert uh, elicitation. But then when we had too much repetition over one country, uh, we stopped the nomination uh, wave and then we get uh, the expert uh, uh, in a well distributed way. So uh, when we had this uh, important score, we multiplied them for the sum of the value that each question give to each risk factor. And then uh, we obtained uh, a risk of introduction, a risk of spread and a detection capability score. Then to have a uh, overall risk, we thought to do to just to sum up the risk of introduction plus the risk of spread and detract the detection capability because we we thought that the detection capability uh, is if it's higher uh, it reduces the risk of introduction and reduce and risk of spread. And uh, as I said before, uh, in Kosovo, the municipality were used instead of the um, shape file for the hunting ground. And one th uh, the last thing we did, uh, we normalized the scale from zero to 100 uh, in a way that we can compare between uh, the different countries. With, and then we uh, did this map with a color range from red that was a high risk to green that is a low risk. And um, of course, for detection capability, since uh, if the detection capability is higher, the risk is less. So for the detection capability, we inverted the color range. So a lower uh, detection capability is red and a higher detection capability is green. Then um, together with this uh, survey, we also um, give to the hunting uh, ground manager a feasibility assessment because uh, what we thought is that uh, you can uh, uh, define all the super the best solution but then if you don't involve the main stakeholder in the uh, decision making is a bit uh, difficult or maybe you cannot have the expected uh, results so we developed a likert type questionnaire for the hunting where uh, that that has been conducted via telephone in Kosovo and integrated in the survey in uh, Montenegro and Serbia. And um, in this uh, feasibility assessment, we just uh, uh, coupled all the risk factor with um, with question that uh, we're asking the um, hunters if uh, how is feasible to change something. And based on that, then we also produce some maps that can be uh, from the result map we changed uh, with this feasibility assessment output to understand where it's more easy. Also with the um, 
with the willingness of Hunter to implement the measure. So, which results we get? We get in total uh, 258 hunting grounds have been surveyed, uh, 18 in Kosovo, 35 in Montenegro, and uh, 205 in Serbia in different periods. So we started in October 2020 and we finished January 2022 because we had to wait the hunting season and all the logistical um, uh, tool. Then from the expert uh, uh, knowledge elicitation, we selected the 62 uh, out of the 300 question that contribute to 37 risk factor. And um, in total, we had 136 uh, experts referred by the seed nominator, and uh, we selected only 33. Uh, of which only 24 uh, completed the, the, um, the elicitation. So we had 70% response rate. And uh, these experts were quite well distributed with uh, the background. Uh, so they were veterinarians, wildlife biologists, or epidemiologists, risk assessor, forestry manager. Um, we had uh, uh, we performed an intercross correlation coefficient the test to uh, assess the agreement uh, among the experts. So uh, we had really uh, slow, uh, only few um, high difference in the scores. So it means that more than seventy percent, ninety percent of the uh, scores we get from the expert on uh, for the risk of introduction and the risk of spread were um, agreed by the expert. And um, so we had also a strong uh, reliability score for this assessment uh, and uh, only a low disagreement for some risks like driven ant that are, as we all know, the more uh, the most debated solution for uh, African swine fever. And yeah, so um, when uh, the result for the risk scoring, uh, we had some country specific findings. And um, as you can see in the graph, I, I put a distribution uh, plot where uh, we can see that uh, Kosovo ranked the worst for uh, three out of four risk, because in Kosovo, we still need to have a training for hunting manager, uh, or at least at the time uh, we did the assessment. Then I don't know what changed the meanwhile. Uh, then uh, um, in Kosovo, often they share the tools or cars between the hunting grounds, so the risk is higher. Uh, supplementary feeding is still performed. There is uh, not enough uh, wild boar carcasses submission, and uh, there is no awareness campaign performed, so the public is not informed about uh, African swine fever. In Montenegro, uh, we had... Um, more or less the situation of Serbia and uh, an interesting difference. Uh, so an interesting difference is that uh, there were no difference in the overall risk depending on uh, the status of infectious. So Montenegro and Serbia were more or less the same. Um, only in for the risk uh, of spread uh, in Serbia uh, was a bit higher because uh, of the supplementary feeding that is still the done in some area that are not infected. Um, they, they didn't manage to reduce the wild boar population. And uh, for them, uh, uh, it's impossible to uh, reduce the presence of uh, uh, pig workers as a hunter. That is uh, a, big, uh, a big risk factor for uh, the risk of spread. So after we get the value, then uh, we just plotted them on the map. Uh, so uh, with uh, this uh, color coding, as I said to you before, uh, the green is the, um, let's say, the most performance and the red is the worst. And uh, what we, you can see here, uh, so you see Serbia, Mont uh, Kosovo, and Montenegro, and uh, basically uh, what's really jump on your eyes is the detection capability that is all red. So <laughs> we see uh, in all three countries that the surveillance effort is uh, still not uh, uh, good enough. Uh, in Kosovo, there is a total lack of systematic, systematic disease in, uh, detection, but maybe not only for African swine fever. 
then uh, in Montenegro and Kosovo still uh, we miss uh, the um, meat storage facility or the dressing facility uh, that have been implemented in Serbia after uh, a bit better after the infection. Uh, there are different levels of disinfection practice among the countries and um, what uh, we can see from here is that uh, um, we, we, uh, then we produce some report for the countries with recommendation and the maps of each uh, risk factor based on these key findings. Um, so in these graphs here, then you can see the result of the feasibility assessment. And um, so uh, I just plotted on a bar that goes from uh, the impossible to the possible with no effort uh, levels. And uh, uh, and I have the three countries, so Serbia, Monte Serbia, Montenegro, and Kosovo. Um, this was really important because we we also figure out that uh, uh, like some activities like driven hunt, for example, in in Montenegro is something that that is impossible. All of them answered impossible, so they will never change this. And uh, if uh, policy would be implemented, they will not really uh, react well on this decision. The same in Kosovo and in Montenegro, for them it's difficult, for example, to use a leak-proof uh, bag to, to move the carcasses. And um, also the disposal plan look quite difficult to be implemented. Um, and the other uh, activities that are difficult for example for Serbia is uh, like 70 percent of our respondents say that for them it's difficult to avoid to use kitchen waste for example to feed the animals and, um, and contrary to Montenegro for them is okay also to um, uh, to uh, apply a selective hunting uh, so they they all would participate to do selective hunting, but this is a bit biased because uh, uh, there are no there are not only hobbyists, but there are also professional uh, selective hunters that would really like to go around and uh, uh, kill all the female targeted female. And um, yeah, for the feasibility, more or less, is this one. So in these graphs, you can see the agreement that goes to the left, so to the impossible, to the right, that is more possible. And the really strong difference between the countries. Um, so um, as you can see, this is only a part of uh, the strategies that one country should use to control and eradicate African swine fever, because as I said before, wildlife is only one, I, I say is only one layer of the risk. Then we have at least other four or five layers of the risk that don't depend only on hunters. Um, of course, uh, the coordination and the collaboration with hunting sector and wildlife authority is important uh, because we still don't have a vaccine available. So if we want to try to mitigate the risk, we really need to talk with these uh, authorities, with this stakeholder. Uh, our uh, tool, um, it aims to uh, assess the management and the biosecurity level in the hunting ground, and uh, it can also help to identify in a specific country which are the strengths and the gaps for the management of, of African swine fever. Um, so uh, we thought to do also a visual representation. So also for people that is not really into data or, or numbers, it's easy to recognize uh, which area are or which hunting grounds are more at risk or not. And uh, it can be also uh, implemented with different uh, levels of um, uh, administrative uh, uh, borders. Uh, then, uh, as I said in the introduction, we would like also to inform the authorities, uh, uh, maybe to invest in uh, and uh, use like a more cost effective uh, policy. Uh, where to invest to implement or uh, uh, make better condition for a specific hunting, hunting ground. 
Um, then we work with these three countries because they were really, um, we can really compare them for the, let's say, the, the strata that is similar. Uh, but then this needs some uh, adjustment if we want to use this tool for other countries that has a different that they have a different uh, um, how to say they have a different uh, uh, management system for the hunting ground and uh, yeah it, it's really a decision support uh, tool because it can help also during the outbreak so if it's done also in the time, you can also value, uh, evaluate the surveillance strategies if they are working or not, if control strategies if they are working or not, if you do in uh, many times in the time. But then he has also some limitation because uh, it's a lot of uh, work. It's a really labor-intensive uh, data collection because uh, you need a lot of time and uh, especially in places with a lot of hunting ground you have to submit uh, um, the hunting each hunting ground basically um, this is designed for the eastern block uh, can be adapted um, and this uh, risk uh, factor are um, tailored for European wildlife because uh, in our expert solicitation we just stayed with European expert. So if uh, this needs to be maybe implemented on a world level, then we need to re-perform the expert solicitation to readapt for other conditions in other countries, or it should be tailored also the expert solicitation for the place where you perform. Um, we didn't uh, consider the African swine fever status, and so maybe this can uh, could have uh, influenced a bit uh, the outcome for Serbia. And the last, the feasibility study, um, rely on personal view. So uh, we took it as an indication, but uh, not something uh, sure. Uh, but it's already a, a first step to include them in the decision-making process because uh, um, without them, it's really complicated to install uh, some guidance or implementation of security or safety policies. Um, so to conclude, um, uh, we would like to also um, let's say, automatize better this process. So uh, we would like to implement some uh, logical coding that uh, um, double check automatically the, valid the validity of the input and, so, and also the automatic calculation. Uh, the, the best would be also to uh, create uh, uh, an interface uh, online, like a um, dashboard that can be, then every country can just uh, upload uh, the Excel from the survey and automatically perform the analysis and plot the data on the map. But uh, it's still a work in progress. Last, to conclude, I don't know if I'm good on timing, uh, Melissa. Uh, I think I'm 20. Yeah, no, you're very good. Okay. Uh, last, uh, I, I just want to show you two pictures. One, uh, because uh, for my specialization in Italy, I did a test with some hunters of my province. So they were, uh, it was really fun because uh, we use Mentimeter and you have to imagine that hunters in Italy are, the median age is over 60. So it was really nice to uh, see how they can use also a, uh, uh, live stream uh, participatory method and it was really fun because then in this uh, uh, word cloud I asked them uh, uh, describe with three words why you go hunt and they answered me nature, passion and friendship. So uh, I know that most of them were hobbyists so we're not really you know these hunters uh, uh, that got to do selection but this is important also to describe um, let's say the goodwill that hunters put in their hobby and on the right i just uh, reproduce this tool for uh, my area so this is calabria the south of italy and these are the hunting grounds that uh, have been surveyed with the output so then i give this output to the uh, hunting ground manager and uh, they focus on this uh, 
more uh, orange uh, hunting ground and they found it that for example they were doing stuff that is not allowed like i don't know um uh, blood the the hunters uh, say the the wild boar in the field without bringing them before in the house so a, a lot of little details that make really a difference thank you uh if you have some question i'm really hoping to discuss Thank you very much, Mario. That was a great presentation and you can see the applause are, are coming in. Thank you. <laughs> so we do have some time for, for questions. Um, and so I would encourage all of these people who are applauding to, to think of some, some questions to, to put into the chat box. Um, I see uh, our colleague, uh, Daniel Beltran has, has switched on his camera and joined. So perhaps first, maybe I would ask um, how FAO is is going to use this work or apply this work um, to you know to reduce the risk of African swine fever in the region. Uh, I don't know if Mario wants to start or Daniel. I'm I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to take that one. Thanks, Melissa. Um. Well, so this is this is work we conducted a couple of years ago, and it was actually in the frame of a, of a regional project on African swine fever in the in the Balkans. So this activity was already fitting together with with uh, some other parallel activities. Uh, as as Mario already presented, and, and and you know by now, like uh, at least in Europe, the main challenge of African swine fever spread is is, is how to control the disease in, in wild boar. So what we are doing. Um, uh, with this information is, is to incorporate it into, first of all, we, we are conducting a series of trainings for hunters uh, all over the place. So we are can, making sure to, to adapt the materials uh, by country, by hunting ground even, and make sure that we stress specifically the, the main gaps that have been identified. But then also we are assisting uh, the, the countries in, in the strategy against African swine fever and more specifically on, on surveillance and control in, in wild boar. So again, like the, the, the results from, from these assessments allow to very quickly pinpoint uh, what are the, the areas where, where we want to, to focus more and, and the areas that need to be changed maybe uh, in, in, the, um, in the strategies. So it's, uh, Nevertheless, I mean, I would I would be very curious to like be able to conduct the same assessments in in in, uh, in a few months' time uh, to see really like if if of course have indeed managed to decrease this these three different risks of uh, of lack of detection and introduction and spread. Thanks, Daniel. Um... I guess the follow-up question I was I was wondering as 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 Mario was presenting was about the the management of the hunting grounds. You know, you mentioned that it was the tool was suitable for the Eastern Bloc more than Western countries. So who who does manage these hunting grounds, and how much of a priority is African swine fever um, for those hunting ground managers? So I take this, Daniel. Um, no, basically, um, as I said, uh, in the Balkans, uh, uh, the hunting ground they came from the hunting area from the king. Uh, all the the so the structure actually is totally different than all the other countries in Europe, and uh, the hunting ground manager have the responsibilities for uh, the behavior of the hunters and also uh, for the disease management, even if they are supported by the local authorities. But since they have also a business model behind it, I mean, the hunting ground in uh, my country, in France, in Germany, they are managed, but they are not so, like they don't make business on hunting. In Serbia, in Kosovo, in Montenegro, people really from all over the world go for hunting. So, um, I mean, the, I feel the manager have a big responsibilities and uh, we we also discuss a lot, but we keep out, for example, um, you know, um, the list of people entering in the hunting ground as a question or also if they 
it took people coming from outside Serbia and if they go back then to their country after they've been hunting there. So uh, we prefer to keep out because uh, then you cannot reply this question in other countries. But to let you understand the differences, uh, this is, I feel, one of the best because... Uh, and then there is also a different management, uh, um, like with the government. I mean, in the other countries, is more on a regional level. There is really national authorities. Correct me if, if I'm wrong, Daniela. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Mario. There's a question in the chat from Sandra um, asking how you intend to keep the tool up to date. Uh, I think you mentioned one of the limitations is that it's it's really quite a intensive process to to run the tool. So do you intend to to do the surveys on a regular basis? Um, and then that's a bit linked to the message from from Sherry Wainwright in the chat about do you think that there would be seasonal differences? So would be it be important to um, to you know, rerun the tool in different seasons to see that seasonality. Uh, yeah, Daniel, I take also this one, and um, I feel uh, yeah, we still need to really understand uh, um, on uh, which uh, period you have to repeat it because of the seasonal differences that are, um, I mean, they're objective and there are also different opinion on the seasonal. Uh, differences uh, for African swine fever, for example, in the northeast of uh, Europe or uh, Asia or southern uh, Europe. So, uh, but I feel that maybe if we do every three months, you can also solve this problem. Uh, and then for the uh, extreme uh, labor consuming, um, I feel that uh, ONS is set up uh, even in a dashboard, uh, it can be automated really well. So. We really need only to set up uh, in a uh, fluent way for the people that are using it. So uh, we thought also to develop uh, guidelines for uh, the hunting uh, ground manager that submit the questionnaire and uh, specific uh, tools. So we get directly the Excel and we just give it, uh, we let it, uh, the, the code eating it and plot everything. Thanks. Um, we just we just have one more question in the chat or in the question and answer box, but everybody should feel free to to continue to write because we still do have about ten minutes. Um, but you did show a, a map of Italy just at the end, and so did you. You applied the tool in Italy, and then Gianluigi. Uh, Rossi wants to know if the surveyed area in Calabria is the same as where ASF was detected. No. Uh, so the area where I performed this test with the hunters is a free area at the moment. Yeah. Um, I had to adapt basically uh, the questionnaire. So I reduced it a bit like... Uh, eight nine question less because uh, it makes no sense asking some stuff uh, because in Italy uh, some management activities uh, first were mandatory then not and now we have again because of a special commi commissario committee that is ruling everything so they made uh, specific legislation on it and uh, it's changed a lot Um. And then, uh, uh, but I, I added, for example, if they went outside for hunting, because uh, if they went for in Serbia or Kosovo or Montenegro, for example. Um, and yeah, and then uh, uh, I feel that if you do also uh, with their uh, particip uh, direct participation is even better because you can uh, explain them uh, each uh, question uh, step by step. And maybe leaving them doing uh, alone uh, is a bit different, but I think it's the most feasible to for them to do directly online and fill in the form. So a bit, uh, I don't know, it's something it needs to be uh, brainstormed. <laughs> Mario, 
Thank you. And you get a thank you from Gianluigi in the, in the chat. Um, colleagues, we don't have any other questions in the question and answer box. Uh, Daniel Beltran, is there, would you like to add anything else um, in terms of, you know, your experience with this, with this tool or, or, um, no, I, th I think like the, the concept of it, it it's applicable in everywhere where there is like a um, regulation of, of hunting. It's just like, uh, as, as Mario mentioned, it needs to be, um, uh, how do you call it, adapted to the to the country's situation because because the, the management of hunting can be so different from one country to another. So that, that's the main difficulty in like easily like applying it somewhere else. But um, on the other hand, one of the of the advantages that also also Mario mentioned is that once once you have it set up for a country, it's it's relatively and once you have the commitment of the of the particularly of the hunting authorities, then it's it becomes relatively easy by email, for example, to just resend periodically the, the surveys to the hunting ground managers and then compile it and then you can you can follow uh, quite precisely like like the, the evolution of the risk and like how how the efforts that you might be taking in terms of hunting are are, are being reflected. So uh, it's it's a I mean it's 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 a it's a tool that requires some efforts at the beginning, but it really provides a very good and precise insight of the risk uh, once you have it uh, running and particularly in, in in something that's usually as difficult as hunting hunting uh, environment. Where, where you don't always have like a very good information uh, coming in, but uh, for anyone interested, I mean, I, I I put it on the on the chat, but like you know, it was mentioned this was based on a, this presentation was based on a scientific paper, so like there's many more details on the on the procedures used, which which was, I mean, it was it was a it was a long process, but we are very we are very proud on how it came out. But no, yeah, nothing and on my side. If I can add, Daniel, in the paper, you have also the map with the feasibility change. So how the risk change if uh, different uh, implementation are applied uh, um, according to the feasibility that the hunters uh, suggested. Um, and then maybe what I can add, if I uh, can, um, that again, this is only a level, so maybe uh, we can also uh, put all the other levels together. So, for example, I have experience in Italy. We have a classifarm. There is a system to assess biosecurity in the peaks. And this uh, can be, you know, another level of the scoring. Then we can have, uh, I don't know, the population studies that are still not super uh, um, well developed all around the world for the wild boar. And then when you merge all the level, you can have kind of a general risk factor that you account on uh, all different um, parts of the <laughs> epidemiological cycle of world war. But uh, I also put my email in the, in the chat. So if everyone wants to write something, uh, send some suggestion, discussion, we can talk maybe in other parts of the world uh, they did already is something we can put together i don't know I, I just put the email if everyone wants feel free thanks mario and that's a really good um lead into the to the role of the community of practice um and daniel toro has put the the links in the chat as well that we have a community of practice with a discussion forum which which we hope that um that any questions can also be be included in that discussion forum and answered in that discussion forum. Um, do you still hear me? So, yeah, <laughs> I got a message that the computer audio is being shared. So, um, yeah, so we can continue this in the discussion forum in the community of practice, which everybody is welcome to join. And we will also put the resources uh, there, such as the paper and the recording from the webinar today, and and possibly a PDF of the presentation. So, I'd like to I'd like to thank everybody very much for joining today. It was a really interesting presentation. I like the tool a lot that brings together 
the risk along with the feasibility of the mitigation measures and uh, and produces some of those visual outputs. So that was uh, really great to see. And we look forward to, you know, maybe to learning about how well accepted it is by the hunting ground managers. And I hope that you get your, your online platform so that, um, so that you can continue to, to get those answers in a, in a feasible way. So thanks very much, Mario. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, thanks, Daniel, Cecilia, Ashima, and Emmy. So we have a team behind all these webinars um, that, that we really appreciate. And thanks uh, to all of the audience for joining. And we will be back in July with, with another webinar. Um, we're still finalizing the topic, so stay tuned and we'll let you know. Um, and yeah, there is, Mario, there's one more question in the chat, which we're going to move on to the discussion forum. Okay. Okay, so we'll get you to answer it in the discussion forum. All right. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.